Welcome back. Uh, in this uh, last video, we have seen uh, an intuitive proof for the Fourier integral theorem, and uh, based on that, you uh, take a signal of a non-periodic signal, that's a function over a real full real line, and then uh, if you apply the Fourier integral theorem, uh, you can see that the function is actually equal to some integral. So we have seen some examples, and in the process, uh, you. In the process, uh, you actually you are actually calculating Fourier transform of the function inside the Fourier integration, uh, Fourier integral theorem. So, when you are uh, getting the when you are uh, calculating the Fourier transform of such functions, what you have is uh, you also have calculated what is the Fourier transform of a delta function. While doing this uh, Fourier transform of the delta function, uh, you have some uh, legitimate question that. Uh, if you look at this for a transform of uh, grade so this delta function for a transform of this delta function which is uh, 1 by root 2 pi integral minus infinity infinity and this uh, delta function we replaced as this way. So delta function by definition is this which is a limit of some uh, usual functions normal uh, piecewise continuous functions you can see here they appear to be like uh, this looks like a box kind of functions. So every time as you increase a, as you decrease a epsilon, it will be going. So it is uh, finally it is going to be point mass function as epsilon goes to 0, you have at 0 it is infinity and at uh, non-zero it is simply 0. So that is what is, uh, that is the limit we have chosen. So here that is the limit that is how uh, you simply take this. This is not a function, this is uh, clearly this is not a function which at 0 it is infinity and at non-zero values uh, it is 0, it is not a function but it is limit of uh, usual functions as you can see. But uh, once you write this uh, limit of uh, usual functions for example limit of uh, f epsilon of uh, x as epsilon goes to 0. So this means uh, this is equal to so you got uh, delta function right. So this uh, limit usual way usually when you write this is converging to some fx this means a point wise convergence. So for example you fix x and this uh, this function this sequence f epsilon for different epsilon values of x uh, for different epsilon values of f epsilon of fixed x that those sequence of those uh, values converges to that limit, limiting value will be f at x. But here if you look at if you take x equal to 0 in the delta, uh, delta function case when you put x equal to 0 what you get is uh, this is infinity and what you end up here is uh, f epsilon of 0 that is 1 by epsilon limit of 1 by epsilon. So as epsilon goes to 0 that is what happens at x equal to 0. So it is uh, it is not converging that means this is not converging at x equal to 0 clearly it is not the point wise convergence. These functions f epsilon of x converges to delta x not point wise at any other place every other place as uh, x is not equal to 0 point wise convergence is assured. Okay. So after some epsilon uh, smaller and smaller this is actually becoming 0 so it is 0. So an x is not equal to 0 point wise convergence there but at x equal to 0 it is not point wise convergence. So this is not point this limit is not uh, this converge so you do not this means not uh, f epsilon of x is not converges to delta x point wise. Okay. So point wise we fix x and then uh, look at its uh, convergence as a sequence of functions. In mathematics it is a, this is a, also called in which metric this converges. Convergence once you write the convergence this means uh, the distance the distance that is a, a metric in which it is converging. This is real number these are real numbers in the metric uh, modulus is the distance that is f epsilon of x minus delta x. So if delta x is usual function that is how you define what is point wise convergence okay. This goes to 0 as epsilon goes to 0 that is the meaning okay. So uh, this is the meaning so point wise convergence is itself is not there so that means it is not even uniform convergence. So if you know that is uniform convergence and you can take this limit inside and that is exactly these two are equal in that case only this are, these two are equal. But your convergence is not neither uh, point wise nor uniform convergence here. So what it means is actually this means some usual functions converging to some non uh, usual function. So this is a not a generalized function. This generalized function this is generalized 
delta function. Delta function is an example of a generalized function which is not a function uh, but has a limit of usual functions uh, but not in the usual sense but as an average sense. So that means I try to multiply this f epsilon of x usual functions. I multiply some function which is uh, a smooth function that means infinitely many differentiable function uh, infinitely differentiable function uh, outside some uh, closed and bounded set it is 0. So that means it has a that is also called in mathematics as a compact support. Gx is uh, infinitely differentiable function and Gx is 0. Gx is uh, this is set of all which is non-zero x such that non-zero is actually you can put it in some closed interval a comma b okay. So such a thing is uh, a where a b are finite numbers okay uh, that is what it is that, that is the meaning of uh, minus infinity to infinity. So they are finite numbers. So if you can put this in some uh, interval so this is called uh, compact support such a function you consider. So g is uh, infinitely differentiable function and uh, so g belongs to c infinity so that is the meaning of infinite differentiable function. If I write here c or c0 if you write like this these are infinitely differentiable function which uh, whose uh, wherever the set of all x such that g is non-zero that is uh, the domain uh, at which g is non-zero that is all you can put it in a, in a closed interval. So, so that why I choose such a functions you can choose any g for all g when I multiply so this integral makes sense. So this integral it makes sense. So this is finite because g is differentiable and uh, this uh, f epsilon of x is anyway is integrable. Uh, so this product is also integrable function. So if you take this averaging so what happens this means uh, a limit of this that is the meaning of so limit of epsilon goes to 0 is actually equal to again the average value of whatever happens here. So this means a delta x times g of x dx and we know that this value is actually g at 0. So that is the meaning. So when you say this uh, delta function is a generalized function which is the limit of usual functions what I mean is actually this this is the definition of uh, okay this is this is uh, so definition of uh, this limit is uh, limit of this if this is the this is the case okay. So if you have the limit of uh, you average so this means this f epsilon of x converges to delta x in an average sense you are averaging that means your integration is adding and uh, right addition of all these things and you are averaging it. So this is a kind of average in a average sense approx uh, this is kind of uh, what do you say uh, average value of it okay. So you consider the f, f value on an average between minus infinity infinity. So once you add it this is true for every g uh, for every uh, g in uh, c c infinity uh, functions of real line okay c c or c0 at infinity whatever c0 means uh, outside some uh, closed and bounded interval this is 0 g going to be 0 okay. So you can say you can also say compact support so c is a word for that so you use this one. So g is 0 outside for some closed interval once you fix g. So for every g if you take here if this is the case if this is true once you see that these are numbers these are your usual numbers okay. So you see that you know with delta function we have seen that property that this is actually g of 0 it makes sense these are numbers and these are numbers this is the usual limit this is the usual limit that modulus of this quantity minus this quantity can be made as small as possible as uh, epsilon is uh, close to 0. So that is the usual uh, usual uh, Euclidean uh, metric I mean uh, the distance Euclidean distance this converges to this. So this is the usual convergence but this is not this is a weak convergence a weak limit also called a weak limit this is called weak limit and this is a usual limit usual limit okay usual limit in, uh, in R okay. So you, this is what uh, what you see so this is the meaning of this uh, limit of usual functions converging to delta x in a weak in the weak weak sense okay 
because this is not a function at all if it is a usual function then you can say there is a make you can ask whether it is a point wise convergence certainly if it is a usual function so the limit of f epsilon of x equal to some usual function f x certainly it is at least it is a point wise convergence you can think of or you can also ask more questions like whether it is uniform converging or not. Uh, such a thing is not here so here it is only a weak convergence when it is converging to some generalized function which is not the usual function you call it uh, it converges to that uh, function in a in on an average that means the what you are getting ending up as a limit is not a function but if you multiply with uh, some uh, small nice functions and you integrate it so integration makes sense with such a thing if it is then uh, you have such a uh, integration is these are numbers so that is a usual limit. So if such is the, so that is what I mean by this uh, conver this uh, limit of usual functions converges to uh, non uh, conventional function like uh, generalized function or uh, a delta function here. So delta function I have chosen such a f epsilon like this and uh, this whose limit is actually delta function that is what that is what you can easily see this okay. So such a thing once you have this this is exactly this is actually the meaning of your uh, this is the meaning of this uh, limit f epsilon if x epsilon goes to 0 is delta x that is the meaning of exactly this one right f epsilon now I can take this this is actually goes to delta function right. So that is this now it makes sense so this is this is true okay this is a weak sense so that is the meaning of weak okay. So that is how you can justify this uh, bringing this limit outside okay and in the last video we also have seen uh, uh, we have defined what is a heavy side function. So heavy side function is this, so which is uh, which is zero on the left side and uh, it's, uh, one at x equal to x positive side. And uh, one can easily see the delta function, which you know as a generalized function, is a derivative of some uh, this heavy side function. Heavy side this function is well defined piecewise continuous function and it is not differentiable function at, at x equal to 0. So but if you can differentiate at that point it is actually uh, it is not defined it is the derivative at x equal to x equal to not 0 but, uh, but you can differentiate any generalized function and uh, you can differentiate any n number of times that, so that is uh, that if you study generalized uh, functions you will understand that. So in that sense we look at this delta function as a derivative of uh, such a thing. Uh, we will see we will try to prove what how uh, this delta function is in this video we will try to prove this uh, delta function is nothing but a derivative of this uh, heavy side function. So if you look at this h of x 0 if x is less than 0 and uh, 1 if x is positive okay and uh, what is that you want you want uh, right hand side ddx of h of x. So what is this by definition this is the limit of h of x plus delta x minus h of x divided by delta x as delta x goes to 0. So what I choose if I choose delta x goes to 0 plus okay if uh, delta x is this what you have what happens to this limit this limit is uh, limit uh, delta x goes to 0. So if I this positive this value is 1 okay even if uh, even if x is not equal to 0 or, uh, or rather if x is uh, equal to 0 uh, if x is greater than or equal to 0 suppose you define it like this this does not matter okay so let us not define anything value at x equal to 0. So if x is positive what happens? x is positive h of uh, x plus h, h, y, h of x itself is 1 minus h of x plus delta x is which is also 1 so which is still positive divided by delta x okay. So this is the this is the meaning so if this is the case and you see that this is 0 value is 0 for x positive x positive uh, derivative is 0. So what happens at, at x, uh, x negative side limit delta x uh, goes to 0. So, so the moment you say x positive either x positive uh, or 0 side uh, 0 side uh, 
yeah so let us take only 0 plus side now we will see we will see what happens uh, when you when you take x uh, what happens to this limit limit delta x goes to 0 minus okay both plus or minus okay so no no when x is positive you can as delta x goes to 0 either positive side or negative side of x okay delta x delta x you reduce even if delta x is very small x minus delta x still positive you can such a such a way you can choose your delta x sufficiently small so that x minus delta x is still positive so in that way in both the cases delta x is greater going to 0 this is always h of x plus delta x is 1 minus h of x when x is positive okay if x is positive this is always true in you go delta x either positive side or negative side now you look at uh, derivative of uh, h of x uh, as a limit delta x goes to 0 h of x plus delta x minus h of uh, x by delta x now if you choose uh, if x is uh, negative what happens then limit of limit delta x goes to 0 what happens h of x minus x is negative I can add or subtract if, if delta x is depending on delta x is the negative or positive x plus delta x or x minus delta x because x is negative it is still negative so you have 0 minus x is negative 0 divided by delta x this is also 0 okay in both the cases you see that uh, d d x of uh, h of x is actually 0 if x is not equal to 0 that is what you have seen this is exactly almost matching for delta when x is not equal to 0 what happens here so if you choose now d d x of uh, h of x at x equal to 0 you want, if you want to calculate this you take limit delta x goes to 0 h of delta x minus h of x by delta x so h of 0 so this is 0 this is by delta x so what is this one this is h of delta x delta x is uh, positive or negative so you have a 0 minus uh, h of 0 is uh, h of 0 let us uh, here itself we let us choose as 0 or uh, let us let us uh, start with this side at 0 you take it as 1 if you take like that this is going to be minus 1 divided by delta x the limit delta x goes to 0 so this is actually infinity okay uh, so what exactly how do how did we define uh, h of x earlier we define negative side is 0 so let us choose a negative side is 0 and positive side only it's just 1 so such so like the like a step okay here up to 0 it is 0 and from more than one it is one so something like that if you choose if you choose like this the h of delta x is one just that because delta x goes to zero plus let us take one minus h of zero is zero in that case this is delta if i choose here a limit delta x goes to zero minus anyway once this is not defined this is this limit this derivative has a limit which is actually infinity so but if i choose let me see what happens if i choose limit delta x goes to 0 minus 0 minus means and you have h of uh, it's, it's delta x will be negative h of negative is 0 minus h of 0 is 0 divided by delta x which is 0 so it's only one limit is 0 other limit is infinity so basically that means it is not defined okay when you say something is infinity even your uh, delta function like this when you say your delta function x equal to infinity means it is not defined that is the meaning of writing infinity so here both the limits are not defined here both sides two different limits this this may be 0 this one side limit is 0 other side what you have is uh, other side uh, limit uh, is simply infinity so it is not uh, defined so that way you what you have is you have infinity if x equal to 0 it is not defined so that is the meaning of delta function so this that is so this implies uh, derivative of uh, delta function is nothing but simply h dash of x what is meaning again 
this is in the weak sense okay so this means so when i write something which is uh, it's a usual function which is piecewise continuous function which you are writing a derivative which you see it's not differentiable function but you are differentiating it so uh, some uh, non differentiable function you are differentiating that is not possible but uh, you have to say you have to look at it as when you are equating it with the delta function which is a generalized function so when you say some uh, two generalized functions are equal again it's like averaging sense so this means this means in a usual way this is uh, h dash of x into some g of x on an average so if wherever it is defined minus infinity infinity dx is same as uh, delta x uh, g of x g, dx this is true for every g is an infinitely differentiable function on the full real line whose uh, uh, which is non zero non zero values of x for which g is uh, g is non zero set of all x i mean where the, the values of x for which g is non zero you can always put it in a closed interval that is called a compact compact set closed and bounded you can put closed and bounded set you can put it so that's why meaning so, so once you when you choose any for every g in this if this is true then you say that this is actually true so this is like a weak equality that is earlier you have a weak limit this is a weak equality it's not a usual uh, usual uh, equal uh, sign this is the meaning so something if you are equating with a generalized function that is basically you are uh, you are uh, equating as a in, a in a weak way okay e weak means this is averaging sense you take this average so that is true that is the meaning of weak equality so when you say this delta function is the derivative of the heavy set function that is in a weak weak way weak sense you are talking about so we have already seen what is the fourier transform of delta function so uh, you have the fourier transform of uh, derivative derivative of uh, h so let us uh, do uh, what is the so you have already seen the delta uh, fourier transform of delta function is so what is the value you get uh, as a fourier series of delta function is 1 by root 2 pi right no uh, what is that 1 by root 2 pi delta function is uh, 1 by root 2 pi that is once you write this uh, cap as a fourier transform it's a xi variable 1 by root 2 pi so this is the meaning of uh, h dash ddx of h of x for which you take if you take a cap for a transform this but if you choose this what is this one 1 by root 2 pi uh, integral minus infinity infinity h of x e power minus i is i x d uh, x h dash here okay so d d x of this so this after uh, if you do the integration by parts here h x into e power minus i is i x do it from minus infinity infinity by root 2 pi so you will have a problem here right so if you do this uh, limits limits h x as x goes to infinity it is actually 1 at infinity it is 1 right it is a constant function so this is 1 and e power minus i is i and uh, this is minus that is 0 so what you have is so it's, this is again uh, this is not the way to do this this is not the way F even if you want to do see if you use the Fourier transform of df by dx Fourier transform of uh, this uh, uh, this is the derivative and what you get you got you have seen is if uh, f is f is uh, at infinity if at, at uh, plus or minus infinity is 0 what you have seen is this is going to be i is i uh, f cap of psi okay so derivative uh, for a transform of the derivative you have seen that is uh, this if this is the case but here for the function h of x uh, this is not true only h at minus infinity it is 0 but plus infinity it is 1 so this way this is not the way to proceed to get this uh, for a transform of this is uh, delta function that is okay but if i want uh, for a transform of h cap of xi how do i go back how do i uh, proceed to find this h cap of psi 
okay. So, to do this, uh, so this idea that you uh, know is a derivative to use the derivative because I know the derivative is exactly delta function. So, that I cannot do because this condition is not satisfied because if you do the integration by parts at plus infinity it still remains. So, this is actually this what you are getting here is 1 by root 2 pi uh, integral minus infinity infinity h of x e power minus i i x dx. So, this is exactly your uh, this is 0. So, h of uh, 1 e power minus i is i x by root 2 pi xi is infinity. So, this there is no meaning for this minus uh, of course, you have to differentiate. So, that will give you i xi differentiation of exponential function. So, that is what it is. So, you have plus i xi by root 2 pi this is your h cap of xi. So, this this there is no meaning this limit does not exist as x goes to infinity. So, such a thing. So, that is why it does not work. So, how to get this? If I get this, if, if, if this makes sense, then I can get this h cap is in terms of 1 by root 2 pi minus of this divided by this that will give you. Okay. So, how do I go, go about this? What I do is I choose my h of uh, x as a limit of some usual function. So, uh, generalized function you can view uh, see if you take uh, usual functions f and g f is equal to g means for every x this is true if this is the case this is also this is a strong way of telling so the strong equality so this is also once it is strongly equal implies it is also weakly equal that means i can simply multiply f into some h of x which is equal to uh, g of x into some h of x whose integral value Okay, this is always true for every h in c c infinity of r, right? This is always true. So strong implies this. That implies weak. F of x equal to g x weakly, weak way. Okay, that's the meaning of weak, weak inequality, weak, uh, weak equality. So in that sense, if h of x is a, a heavy side function. I can write this as a limit of some uh, h alpha of x and then as I take 0 to 0 plus. What is this where h of uh, alpha of x is? What I do is uh, I simply multiply 1 wherever it is 1, 0 if t is less than or equal to 0 and then you have uh, at t positive uh, sorry x x positive x is this x is positive side what i do is i multiplied with e power minus alpha x instead of 1 i choose this one minus alpha x alpha is positive anyway because it's going from 0 to alpha going to 0 plus plus side so if i choose that like this these are h alpha of x are all uh, piece wise continuous functions and if this is actually a strong this I do not say strong because these are usual functions, but yeah, these are strong. This is strong implies it is also weak. Okay, if you look at this here, if it is strongly equal, so hx is well defined function, but it is piecewise continuous function. Here, if I choose at x equal to 0, both are same, at x is a positive as alpha goes to 0 plus is going to be 1. So, that way uh, both are strong equality what you have. So, I write like this and then. And then I apply, uh, I try to find what is my h cap of psi here using this. Then what I get is uh, by 1 by root 2 pi integral minus infinity infinity, what you get is h of x uh, into e power minus i xi x dx. This is the definition of Fourier transform, and this is 1 by root 2 pi. And now I can put this uh, h of x as this limit of this limit alpha goes to 0 plus h alpha of x e power uh, minus i is i x dx. Now, because uh, because of this, uh, this is actually your h of x and this is exactly equal to your uh, weak limit and strong limit. right? So, if I have this, limit of this is same as, so either this is also weak sense they are same. This limit is limit of this is equal to h of x 
because this is strong uh, equality is also weakly this is true that means uh, limit of uh, this is this means 1 by root 2 pi uh, limit of alpha goes to 0 plus and you have minus infinity infinity h alpha of x e power minus i j x t x. So, your c c infinity or so only thing is here I have chosen c c infinity because when I say in the weak sense when you multiply when you have the multiplication function this uh, nice function so that this integral makes sense because here I assume that the integral makes sense if at all the integral makes sense with this uh, in, the, in the Fourier transform e power minus i i x so that is how I have chosen so you do not don't ask uh, why this is not this function is not c c infinity function this is this is where, where this is but this is 0 everywhere wherever e power minus i j x is non zero on the, on the full real line which is not uh, closed and bounded as long as this whole integral makes sense that is what is the uh, point so here this makes sense h alpha of e power minus i j x uh, here this integral makes sense okay and uh, once you have this limit limit alpha goes to zero that is h of x if at all it makes sense if that means this limit if this limit is the usual way uh, if it converges to something and then that, that means it converges to that okay so in that because it is weak, strong implies weak so weak weak limit so you, you can write this uh, this step from this step to this step so this is equal to 1 by root 2 pi and this limit alpha goes to 0, zero plus what happens here this i can write now as 0 to infinity e power minus alpha x uh, into e power i xi x dx. So, what is this one? 1 by root 2 pi limit alpha goes to 0 plus and this integral is a usual integral that is uh, 1 plus i xi alpha plus i xi. So, e power minus alpha plus i xi into x divided by minus alpha plus i z this is from 0 to infinity at infinity because of alpha is positive alpha is a real number e power minus alpha x that makes it 0 and what you get is 1 by root to pi only 0 contribution will be there alpha goes to 0 plus and what you have at 0 this is minus minus plus so you get 1 divided by alpha plus i z. So, this is exactly equal to uh, 1 divided by i is i root 2 pi. So, this is my this is exactly what I got as h cap of xi. Right? You still I think uh, you look at this this is strong equality and if you want to just still justify this question. So, this limit of this h of alpha and uh, this is limit of uh, h of this uh, multiplied with this g of x uh, and we do not know whether this is finite or not right. See if uh, this if this is uh, e power minus i xi x if it is a, a differentiable function uh, which is a comp which is in uh, non zero all the if it is in c c infinity in this notation if this is the case and we know that this is finite but here we cannot say whether this integral is finite or not okay in that sense though we have done formally still this uh, this is uh, still questionable because hx is this and we substituted this now this step this step is still questionable because we do not know whether this is uh, finite or not because the multiplication uh, function the, this integral is finite but this integral you do not know whether it is finite or not. So, in any case formally if you do this if you do formally this what you get is this one. So, this is still questionable right. So, if this is true so what happens to your inverse Fourier transform inverse Fourier transform let me write this inverse of inversion of f of script f of Fourier transform is script f inverse of 1 divided by i xi root 2 pi. So, this you should get it as uh, as a function of x what is this one if you calculate you should get back your h of x okay. If this is true I should get back here 
uh, h of x that is the question okay. So, let us choose let us start with doing this so, this is equal to by definition 1 by root 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity 1 by i xi root 2 pi e power i xi x d xi that is the meaning okay. So, what is this one? So, first one is uh, this you can rewrite 1 by uh, 2 pi 1 by 2 pi and this is minus infinity infinity cos xi x by cos xi x by uh, cos xi x plus i sin xi x divided by i xi t xi and you see cos xi x by xi is a odd function from minus infinity infinity. So, this that integral will be 0. So, what you get is 2 by i 2 pi um, i i cancel here that you get uh, minus infinity to infinity. This is an odd function. So, you have 0 to infinity. This is a uh, sin xi, xi x by xi is even function. So, it you have 2 times of that uh, 0 to infinity sin xi x by xi d xi. So, this is exactly 1 by pi. So, 1 by pi into the value of this when x is uh, positive okay when x is positive. So, so this if you calculate this uh, we will we'll try to prove this one if uh, this value is uh, value of this is uh, x this value is uh, 1 by pi this is uh, here this value is if x is positive this value is 1 pi by 2 and this uh, this value is value of this integral is minus pi by 2 if x is negative. If x equal to 0 that is anyway 0. So, we do not define it at all okay there. So, what you see is is nothing but uh, half if x is positive minus half if x is negative okay, but this is not equal to your h of x. So, that means there is something wrong here. So, it is not uh, it is not really this this value okay. So, this is this is wrong this is actually wrong okay. It is not really wrong, but uh, there is something missing here. So, that is what we see. So, but what is this one this is exactly equal to this is not h of x, but this is equal to h of x minus half if you do like this h of x uh, minus half if you do uh, this is 1 uh, the 0 minus half and x is less than 0 this is this when uh, when uh, so you when 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 x is positive it is going to be 1 1 minus 1 that is half 1 minus half that is half anyway. So, this is actually h x minus half okay. Fourier inverse transform of this function is actually equal to this one. So, that will give you uh, so this is so through this instead of directly calculating when you do this direct calculation to find this uh, h cap uh, even though you have the strong inequality you introduced there is still a question uh, question this uh, bringing this uh, limit inside or okay. So, this uh, taking bringing this limit outside this is still questionable and uh, even the formally if you do it. So, that is why you somewhere you went wrong somewhere it is not true. So, it is not really true okay this is not true, but uh, if this is true, but it is almost uh, but, but this helps you to find the Fourier inversion, inversion of this one this function when you calculate what you see is not h of x, but this is h of x minus half. So, if I bring this uh, what what you have is Fourier inverse transform of uh, 1 by i xi root 2 pi of xi a Fourier inversion Fourier inversion this is what you have. So, you bring this Fourier inversion to this side if I multiply Fourier both sides Fourier transform of this and this uh, this becomes 1 by 
uh, I uh, this is function of x right this function of x. So, this will become uh, Fourier inversion of x Fourier transform of x is finally, see this is this Fourier transform of this function of xi is a overall function of x. When you apply Fourier transform of function of x it is a function of xi that is 1 by i xi root 2 pi which is equal to here h cap of xi Fourier transform of two functions because it is a linear Fourier transform is uh, f cap of uh, xi is actually or rather uh, if you if you one of the property of the Fourier transform is f 1 and plus f 2 uh, cap of psi is actually you can split it into two parts integral 1 by root 2 pi 0 minus infinity to infinity f 1 plus f 2 of x into e power minus i xi x dx. So, this is actually you split this into two parts uh, f 1 of x into e power minus i j x dx plus 1 by root 2 pi uh, integral minus infinity infinity f 2 of x e power minus i j x dx. What are this? This is exactly f 1 cap of xi plus f 2 cap of xi. So, it is a linear property. So, this is the linear property linearity of the Fourier transform. So, if you use this here Fourier transform of uh, h 1 is f 1 minus half is f 2. So, if you do that you will see that uh, if you multiply even constant here and you have a constant here. So, that is going to be c times of this. So, c is minus 1. So, you have a minus uh, Fourier transform of I, I do not put uh, cap on uh, half function constant function I write like this 1 by 2 for a transform of this. So, that will give me h cap of xi the for a transform of the heavy side function is for a transform of uh, half constant function plus 1 divided by i xi root 2 pi which is not exactly this, but you have to add with for a transform of half. So, this is wrong you have somewhere we missed this uh, for a transform of half. So, if we know Fourier transform of half that is 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity infinity Fourier transform of half that is half uh, e power minus i is i x d uh, x d x that is what is the meaning. So, what how to how to find this or uh, rather so this is also meaningless though, so this is uh, this is not you cannot integrate this function. So, instead so to find this the question is what is this uh, Fourier transform of a constant function. So, we have we have already seen that uh, Fourier transform of a delta function is uh, 1 by root 2 pi ok. So, that means uh, Fourier transform of uh, uh, root 2 pi uh, root 2 or rather root pi by 2 is equal to ok. So, how do I do this um, for a transform of um, now simply bring it bring it here. So, you want it half right. So, you want half for a transform of half is uh, so, you have this uh, Fourier transform of this heavy side function is uh, uh, you have this uh, 1 by i z i z i root 2 pi plus something which is a Fourier transform of a constant function. Uh, we will try to find this Fourier transform once we know this Fourier transform of a constant function and we will find eventually uh, then we know exactly what is a Fourier transform of the heavy side function. So, we will try to find this uh, Fourier transform of a constant function in the next video uh, once the once we have that we have the Fourier transform of uh, heavy side function. So, we will see the all this in the next video along with the properties of the Fourier transform. Thank you very much.